Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the new trailer for Marvel's Secret Invasion. New episodes coming to Disney Plus June 21st. It's Captain America the Winter Soldier in the MCU again, and I think we are ready for some spycraft and some scroll searches. Who do you trust? Well, you can trust this guy to break this shit down frame by frame for the details you missed. Who has been the scroll in the MCU this whole time? It's probably Rhodey, it's probably Everett Ross. Do DC Asian clear he's up there for me? Val, yeah, you're up there too. Anyway, let's break down this trailer. Here we go. Fury. Since you've been gone, things have gotten much worse. The trailer opens with Fury walking up to a fenced in site in the woods. Looks like an exclusion zone because over on the far left, if you look closely, is a radioactive warning sign. That gate has been left open as if this is the kind of place that you should know not to go in there. We learned in a write up from Vanity Fair that part of the series will take place in a decommissioned radioactive site in Russia. Executive producer Jonathan Schwartz said, quote, scrolls are much more able to withstand radioactivity and there are a ton of decommissioned radioactive sites within Russia. That's where Gravik has set up his base of operations. So Gravik, or Gravik is Kingsley Benadir's Skrull character, the leader of a rebel group of Skrulls who has broken away from Talos' faction, this breakaway group aiming to infiltrate Earth for resources. In Brian Michael Bendis' Secret Invasion crossover event in the comics, we learn that many of the Avengers and high-ranking individuals on Earth have been secretly supplanted by Skrull imposters for quite some time, leading to a paranoid scramble in which everyone is asking, who do you trust? The Skrulls in the comics are led by Varenki, who had infiltrated the Marvel heroes in disguise as Spider-Woman Jessica Drew. But the MCU is in a different situation. Captain Marvel revealed most of the Skrulls are just friendly refugees of the cruel imperialistic Kree. The Skrulls were befriended by Nick Fury and Carol Danvers. We saw Talos and his wife Soren impersonating Nick Fury and Maria Hill in Spider-Man Far From Home, while the real Fury was up on a Skrull space station. It seems like that's what he's beating back down from now. There was an interesting line in Far From Home that mentioned Kree sleeper cells. I thought Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Nick. Then we saw a Skrull in the WandaVision mid credit scene recruiting Monica Rambeau to go meet with Wee assume Nick Fury. And then very briefly, there was a scroll in a tracksuit being detained by the TVA in the first episode of Loki, making us all give second glances to the members of the tracksuit mafia in Hawkeye. So in the MCU, rather than all scrolls being evil, there's a divide between friendly scrolls like Talos and the more extremist terroristic scrolls like Gravik. We also know from the Vanity Fair photo that Amelia Clark's character, Gia, will be in this radioactive site, and Gia is Talos's daughter, whom we last saw playing Uno with a young Monica Rambeau at the end of Captain Marvel. We know that Gia has been impatient with Talos' ability to find a new home for the Skrulls. But this detail of the Skrulls being able to withstand radiation is pretty interesting. Could it be something to do with their exposure to radiation on different planets in space, perhaps? Could whatever this radiation source is be the same source as the exposure that Monica Rambeau might have had as a child that led to her odd precondition that showed up on her X-ray scans in WandaVision, activated by further passes through the CMBR of Wanda's hex barrier to turn her into Photon now? And could that radiation also be the cause of her mother Maria's cancer? We do see a wide shot of this radioactive site later in the trailer. And just to be clear, this is not Chernobyl. Chernobyl did not have cooling towers like this. They were under construction when the explosion happened, but they were never finished. This seems to be a completely different radioactive site. Also, by the way, Pripyat is not in Russia. It's in present day Ukraine. That said, there may have been other radioactive sites that we didn't know about that just weren't as bad as Chernobyl. Chernobyl's just the one that the international community found out about because it was so bad. Now, it's interesting how when talking with Talos, Fury goes without the eye patch. Maybe as a way to show that it's actually the real Fury. Like his eye scar could be so unique that it's just too hard to be impersonated by scrolls. Why? Because it was scratched into him, not by a regular cap, but by a flurkin. So that we saw in Captain Marvel. Oh, mother flurkin. You okay? Yeah, it's just a scratch. All right, on to the next trailer clip. Why do you think I came back? All right, we are in Moscow's Red Square with St. Basil's Cathedral and the Kremlin crowded with a Russian festival as Gravik detonates a bomb in a crowd. It's actually pretty similar to a scene in another great spycraft movie, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The Kremlin gets fully wrecked and Tom Cruise has to run for his life. Maria Hill tries to steady herself in the chaos. Seems like the Skrulls are trying to incite an international incident between world powers. The Marvel Studios title card has been muddied up as if to say, we're getting gritty here. We're literally grounding this story and none of it's gonna look like it was shot in the volume. Let's hope so. On to the next clip. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. This is personal. 
right, we jump from Moscow to London, place last saw with some scroll impersonators, Fury slash Talos, Hill slash Soren, and Spider-Man Far From Home. You can see Tower Bridge in the foreground here, and that's the Tower of London on the lower right. We meet Olivia Coleman as Sonia Fallsworth, a high-ranking MI6 agent who's an old ally of Nick Fury's looking to protect England's national security interests during this infiltration. She's described as, quote, a more antagonistic presence, and she could be working with or against Fury, depending on their desired goals. I'm assuming she's something like M from the Bond movies, but her name, Fallsworth, might make her a descendant of James Montgomery Fallsworth, who was part of the Howling Commandos and Cap and Bucky's crew in the first Cap film. They did something similar with Jim Morita and Principal Morita in Spider-Man Homecoming. Talos tries to grab Gravik in a museum cafe, but everyone around them turns into Gravik, including the server. Interesting scroll shape-shifting logic there that their clothes shape-shift, but not their accessories like their purses and backpacks. Just, you know, where do we draw the line there? But this portrait gallery has an exhibit, The Faces of Freedom, including figures like Winston Churchill. Maybe the implication could be that some of these political leaders that we take for granted could have been scrolls, like the present day politicians seem to be on the show. Fallsworth and Fury come up upon the headstone of Colonel Nicholas J. Fury, which I assume is this Nick and not like his dad is also named Nick. We know that Nick did reach the rank of Colonel. He told that to Captain Marvel in that bar in Captain Marvel film. I'm just questioning this because we already saw a fake gravestone for Nick Fury at the end of Captain America the Winter Soldier with a different quote, that great quote from the book of Ezekiel referencing his character Jules in Pulp Fiction. But this quote, greater love hath no man, let a man lay down his life for his friend. This is John 15, 13, different book of the Bible. We just gotta wonder how many fake graves Nick Fury has and does he keep guns at all of them? Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Movies and TV can be great escapism, but when it's time to face things head on, BetterHelp is here to help. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, just answer a few questions about what you're looking for from therapy and what your preferences are. BetterHelp will then match you with a therapist from their network that's right for you. After that, talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether that's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. BetterHelp gives you the same level of professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash new rockstars. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash new rockstars for 10% off your first month of therapy. On to the next clip. Very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet. Do you feel responsible? Yeah, we see Nick Fury opening a container in a mausoleum to get a gun. The door to this thing looks like it has a glowing face of either a wolf or a fox that lights up. Yeah, I think Curie's just got caches of guns everywhere. We get quick shots of Maria Hill and Everett Ross. Ross, we recently saw in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, defying his ex-wife and current CIA director Val to commit espionage for the Wakandans, and at the end of that movie, broken free by Okoye. So he's a man on the run too. And I gotta imagine in a political espionage show, the CIA director is gonna show up at some point. Interesting shot here some armed soldiers push through a car crash site shooting at attackers protecting two figures in the center specifically someone with white hair i think this is united states president britson dermot moroni's character and this is his presidential motorcade after being struck by missiles we know that harrison ford is going to be playing president thaddeus ross in captain america 4 so i think at the end of the series something is going to happen to ritson either he's going to have to resign due to some scroll related scandal or he's going to get assassinated gia finds this interesting chamber that's filled with covered bodies on gurneys with glowing parts plugged into wires on the Floor. These are definitely scrolls because we saw this shot with Fallsworth in the last trailer, but I'm wondering if these might be soldiers or super scrolls that are being kept in this kind of hibernative state, being prepared to activate in a kind of ground war. On to the next clip. Where are the Avengers? This war is one I have to fight alone. Okay, next we globetrot to what looks like Paris, I wanna say, from overhead. And someone's reading the French newspaper Le Globe, the headline translated to The Avengers, The Battle of New York. It's really weird to see this newspaper now. The Battle of New York was like 13 to 14 years ago in the MCU timeline. The Avengers have been involved in way bigger stuff since then. So we might be seeing a flashback to the year 2012. Maybe there was a scroll impersonator on that World Security Council that Nick Fury had to answer to in that film. Could be connected to that French diplomat who Ramona sparred with at the UN in Wakanda Forever. Then we see Gravik from the back 
the head as he enters his room with these curved beams. This must be in that Russian radioactive site because in the D23 trailer, we saw Gia enter the same room and there is Russian lettering on the door. Scrolls are building something. I'm wondering if they're trying to engineer Bruce Banner's quantum tunnel platform because it does kind of look like that here. Are the scrolls trying to go back in time and change the history so that they could screw their enemies from the beginning? Or are we just looking at a radiation field that could turn normal scrolls into militant super scrolls? I mean, what you think this weapon is, but let's move on. You're the most wanted man on the planet. You don't know what they have planned for you. Great Nick Fury. Okay, Fury shares a drink with Rhodey, who I definitely think is a scroll. It just kind of makes sense. He's like the one Avenger who's been there since the beginning, who would be kind of fun to reveal as a scroll shapeshifter. But Rhodey calls him the most wanted man on the planet. So Fury might be framed for one of these attacks, either the Russian bombing or the hit on the president. But then this shot of this case opening might be the most mysterious shot of the trailer because the label reads Department of Damage Control with specimen sample barcode in the word cull, C-U-L-L. -L. What's crazy about this is this was digitally removed in the same shot from the D23 trailer. So this was added later. Cull could refer to Cull Obsidian, one of Thanos' Black Order, who was last seen in the Battle of Wakanda in Avengers Infinity War. He was killed when Bruce Banner strapped his Hulkbuster armor gauntlet on his arm and sent him flying, grinding against a barrier dome until he went boom. Remember, the DODC is a superhero enforcement agency who has shown up in Spider-Man No Way Home and Ms. Marvel and She-Hulk, always trying to gather super tech to keep it under control and in evidence lockers. So who knows, maybe the DODC recovered Cull Obsidian's hand from Central Park after it was separated from Wong using that portal and hacky sacked by Bruce. There just seems to be a plot to acquire Cull Obsidian's powers. I got a theory about this, so I'll get to a bit later. There's a quick shot of a scroll punching a dude with a suddenly massive Cull Obsidian like arm. Also, in this section, we see Gravik extending his arm with some interesting stretchy stretch abilities, which looks like an attack on Ritson's motorcade, but it kind of looks like he's shape shifting into a floor Colossi like Groot, who can extend the branches of his arm similarly, like this. We might be looking at Super Scrolls, who, in addition to shape shifting to other people's appearances, can also mimic their superpowers. And in Secret Invasion comics, we see this with the Fantastic Four. So, this series may be re engineered that, but with established MCU characters. So instead of Reed Richards, we see the stretchy armed Groot powers. Instead of Ben Grimm, we see the big boy Cull Obsidian. Instead of Johnny Storm, they could use a fiery extremist soldier like that fighter we saw in the Shang-Chi fighting club. And instead of Sue Storm, maybe someone with uh, some invisibility cloaking tech like we saw the Skrulls using on their space station in Captain Marvel. Then there's a quick shot of Talos with a shot to the chest as his face is half transforming into the green skin of a scroll. Gross. Pick a lane, dude. He does not look like he's in good shape. This could actually be the person that Gia is crying over earlier in the trailer. We might see Talos die in this show. Okay, on to the last clip. One last fight. Okay, so Fury is leaving the mausoleum, pops his collar like a badass. I like how the ticks of the trailer music are slowing down like a clock needing to be rewound. And he says, one last fight. Does that mean Fury will truly retire in this? Will he die in this? Can Fury ever really die? The show's new title card divides each letter down the center with a brighter shade of green on the right to show the whole theme of dual identity of this series. I love the official poster for the series, an amazing composition of reassembled stripes of shredded documents showing Fury's face in black and white, but with a few missing to reveal the scroll face underneath. I cannot wait for this series. I think it's gonna be a nice, grounded, mystery, thriller, spy craft show. I feel like this is exactly what we need in the MCU right now. Captain America Winter Soldier is top two MCU for me. So anything that reminds us of that film in MCU Phase 5, I very much approve of. Let me know what you love the most about this trailer and what you're most excited for for Secret Invasion. And a reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The Deep Dive. And you can support our growing network by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop, like this Deep Dive hoodie. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.